Did you know that Robert Jordan and George R.R. R. Martin shared a connection? Did you know that in 1998, Robert Jordan's New Spring was first published alongside George R.R. R. Martin's novella The Hedge Knight in Robert Silverberg's Legends Fantasy Anthology? Did you know that George Double R attributed his success to Robert Jordan and the cover quote he provided when A Game of Thrones was first published? Did you know that George R.R. R. Martin penned a memorial to Jordan upon his death in 2007? Did you know that Robert Jordan sent a letter to Georgie Pooh's editor to congratulate her on the decision to make a song of ice and fire longer than a trilogy? Crazy, right? But have you ever wondered what Robert Jordan's The Eye of the World would have been like if George R. R. Martin wrote it? We most certainly have, and it sounds like it's time for our new segment called Lustar! Yeah, it's hard to do. I wish I had a third arm. I, 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 I got overheated from Ian right there. Maureen wasn't lying when she said she is seeking stories that she knows. Where? About. What part of the book? Okay, so like, we're outside of uh, White Bridge right now. I'm like hiding out. Uh, I found this wall. Ryan? My number one change that George R. R. Martin would have made to the eye of the world involves Parent. When he engages those two white cloaks and kills them with his axe. Just a flesh wound. After they kill Hopper. If George R. R. Martin had written this, he would have had Perrin kill those white cloaks with his teeth. And you turned yourself into a dog. I think that he would have snarled, grabbed them by the throat, and ripped it out by his face. Ow! Quit it. He would be standing there, straddled by a wolf or two. This man's got nard. Blood dripping down his chin before he got hit by the axe. This blood lust would have been a reoccurring theme that happens for Perrin throughout the series, where he has to fight off his taste for human blood. Strong point there, Brother Dan. Now, my number one way that I believe that George R. R. Martin would have changed the eye of the world would be that we would not know who the Dragon Reborn is at the end of the book. A delicious whodunit after this. In fact, the three boys will all believe that they themselves are the Dragon Reborn, as there will be people influencing them to believe such. Why are they influencing them? We won't know. Are these people good? Are they bad? We'll have to figure that out. But I believe that by the end of Eye of the World, the three Edmonds Fielders would each individually believe that they are the Dragon Reborn. I am the Dragon! I am- Reader would not know yet who the real one is. Ryan, my number two change that George R. R. Martin would have made to the Eye of the World involves Matt and the Ruby Hilted Dagger. So when he got this dagger from Shadow Logoth, it started to infest him with evil. Evil? I think this evil would have been more manifest and would have resulted in a situation where Matt makes a go at Moraine. Oh no, he didn't and tries to kill her. Lan would have stepped in and to defend Moraine, would have cut Matt's ear off. Van go. And Moraine would have healed the ear onto Matt. However, as Moraine is not a yellow, I believe that Matt would have hearing damage in that ear the entire series. And this would be a reoccurring theme for Matt as he goes on. All right, so for my number two, I'm going to talk about Loyal. Yes, Loyal. There's going to be a scene when he's leaving the Queen's Blessing with the group. And he's going to finger his satchel. And he's going to suddenly run back in. He's going to say, I, got, I, I lost a book. I lost a book. Book, book, book. He's going to go back in by himself. He's going to return shortly afterwards, and he's going to be lamenting, I've lost the book. Rand's going to notice several times that Loyal has not mentioned the book, book since having lost it. To make things more intriguing, there will be a scene where Loyal is lamenting the loss of the old gear numbers, and he's going to talk about how the old gears aren't able to repopulate the species like they used to. Oh, gross! I don't want to hear about that! One of the reasons why the elders want him to come home is for him to start populating. Do, do, do I have to? And Ryan's gonna feel an energy coming from Loyal that he had not previously experienced before. Ryan, number three on my list of the changes George R. R. Martin would have made to the eye of the world involves Rand himself. When he enters Andor and is sitting on the wall in order to get a better view of Loghain, he falls into the royal garden Humpty Dumpty! and is actually apprehended by guards. 
and taken before the Queen Morgase and her advisor Elida. If George R. R. Martin had wrote this, Rand not only would have been whipped for his transgressions, but also thrown into the darkest cells. He would have stayed there for at least a month. His jailer would have been cruel. You're a monster. He would have been fed only dirty water and stale bread. And at one point, he would have had to capture and kill a rat and eat it in order to sustain himself. Thinks he's Rambo. Brother Dan, as your list grows, your arguments are stronger. But listen to my number three change. Chapter 41, Old Friends and New Enemies. She will claim that Moraine's healing lasted just long enough for the group to leave Emmonsfield and that he takes a sudden turn for the worse. Maureen is genuinely surprised by this news. Good, strong hands, don't they? And then Eve uses this moment to convince the Edmondsfielders to come back. Maureen actively loses the group. Everyone starts packing up and is furious with her when suddenly a fade will enter the room, grab Nynaeve, and Maureen will abracadabra Zanzibar or Cat's <laughs> Cradle, Cat on Hot Stone, whatever's. Oh, meow. <laughs> and they will save Nynaeve and the group, and thereby winning the group back to their house. Ryan, the number four change that I think that George R. R. Martin would make to the eye of the world involves the ways. I think Mash and Chin is scared, but I think that the ways are large enough that there would have been something else living down there. A tree, an ancient tree that is connected to the Ogier in some way, maybe a race of ancient people, perhaps a mushroom forest of doom. doom. There would have been something else besides Mash and Chin, and I think George R. R. would have made it a little little bit more sinister. My number four change would be this. In the aftermath of the Beltran massacre, Lan and Ran are scurrying out of the room and they encounter Moraine and the angry mob. She does her amazing speech. Walla walla walla, shish gam boom, everyone is cowed. Everyone's going, oh my god, and they start, the, the crowd is shifting, right? But then Senbui walks up. Yes, Mr. Thatch. And he points out to the crowd that Maureen has actually taken some of Pat and Fane's fireworks. <laughs> Hide them to the end of her staff and use that to make those fiery displays. And the crowd turns suddenly. Angry, furious, they charge, and Lan and Moraine have to cut their way free. It is a total disaster. The horror! The horror! Talk about bloody congers and bloody coplins. I shall compose a funeral dirge. Oh, and St. Bruce House. Ryan, the number one change I think George R. R. Martin would have made to the eye of the world involves Winter Night and the attack of the Trollocs on the two rivers. I believe that there would have been a beloved character or two that would have perished in that attack. In my estimation, I think that Mistress Alvere and her sweet, sweet honey cakes. Buns would have died, as well as Mistress Luhan. I don't believe that she would have killed a Trolloc with a frying pan. Tell that to my frying pan. I think she would have been eaten alive. Ran would have come across one or both of their corpses as he was crossing the wine spring in order to talk to Moraine. I also think that this provides a much stronger impetus for not only Perrin, but also Egwene to leave the village not only under the guise of adventure, but also some sort of vengeance and justice. Brother Dan, are you ready for my final and most important entry into this amazing list off we're doing? My number five way that George Double R would have changed the IO world, it goes like this. At the end of the book, we are treated to a passage and we return to the wind that you see in the beginning of the book. The wind swoops down from a cold ocean. It is nighttime. The wind travels up a side of a mountain. We are introduced to a large tower, a dark, dark tower at night. And the wind slides up the tower wall through a portal. We enter a gigantic chamber, uh, an impossibly large chamber with oily black walls. Just an empty, empty room. And it is empty save for one thing, and that is a woman huddled on the ground, chained. She is bedraggled. She is beaten down. She's barely alive, and the wind moves her hair off her face, and we see that it is Rand's mother. We don't know her name yet, but she is holding a thorny 
rose stem with a white blossom. The wind continues up and up, and we see Ishamael standing over her, laughing. <laughs> Let us know what you think. Put your comments in the chat below. Who do you think had the best list? And let us know what other changes you believe George Double R would have made had he written The Eye of the World. This is super fun, guys. And we're going to be doing this for each book of the series. If you like the real time content, then please press the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Also, please consider being a Patreon member, where you get early access to videos and other perks. Remember that supporting your Wheel of Time content creators is truly following the way of the leaf. We love you, and we're sorry. <laughs>